Welcome back to the fog. Come, stay a while. I'm Taylor, your casual Crypt Keeper, and I got something for you. Without question, horror games are my favorite genre of gaming. I mean, fun is good, we love fun, but jumping from a scare, forgetting that it's a game and you're not really in danger, that's the best feeling in the world to me. Unfortunately though, as cool as these horror games are, you're gonna have a tough time trying to play them. Banned, illegal, lost to time, Find out why and more in top 5 horror games you're forbidden from playing. Let me know down below which of these you would just love to get your hands on if you could only have one. I read all the comments, so you know, make sure they're nice, okay? Let's dive on in. Number 5, Resident Evil 3.5. When Resident Evil 4 came out in 2005, it seemed like space age technology. The game didn't look like anything else. Its unique third person camera and focus on tight gunplay made it feel unique, tense, like the action was up close and personal. Since then, pretty much every big budget action game owes a little something something to Resident Evil 4. If we didn't have Leon S. Kennedy spin kicking farmers in rural Spain, we wouldn't have The Last of Us, Dead Space, Uncharted, God of War, Bioshock, all of these games developers have openly admitted were influenced and inspired by RE4's wild leaps in game design. So it's fascinating to think that a slightly different timeline could have played out if we had something different. The first ever gameplay demo for Resident Evil 4, referred to as Resident Evil 3.5 or Hallucination or the Hookman demo, is a small little peer into a world where Resident Evil 4 stuck to the same style of gameplay as the original game, with a fixed camera perspective and a stronger focus on horror in ways the series hadn't ever seen before. And there were no zombies or mutant crocodiles or any of the usual flesh monsters this time around. Instead, we saw series mainstay Leon going against what looked like ghosts and the supernatural, cursed dolls, and if the demo's to be believed, his own mind. In this build of the game, Leon is infected with a virus that causes him to hallucinate, manifesting in you fighting enemies that weren't even there. It's a really cool idea, and one that wouldn't show up again until Resident Evil Village, all the way in 2022, nearly 20 years after the demo was first shown off in 2003. Now unfortunately for Resident Evil diehards like yours truly, this E3 demo is all we ever got of the hallucination or hookman build, no playable version version has ever come out, nor are we even really aware if it ever truly did exist, or if all of this was more of a mock-up proof of concept. Now in the end, we got the right game. Resident Evil 4 was a once in a lifetime magnum opus of game design. It's probably my favorite game of all time. I think I've played it more than I've had hot dinners, and I'm glad it's the one we got. But it's fun to think about what could have been. In the two years between this footage and the final release of the game, the game was unrecognizable, changing literally everything except the protagonist and his amazing leather jacket and haircut, leaving us only able to speculate what would it have been like if we got this one instead? Would we have seen a golden era of haunted baby games? And if you're looking for more Top Scary content, hey, may I recommend Top 5 Scary? We've got horror games, horror movies, monsters, ghosts, goblins, UFOs, pretty much everything scary under the sun and even above it too. So click through and I am certain you'll find something worth screaming at. Number 4, Rule of Rose. Now this one is a tiny bit of a cheat since of all the games on this list, this one is probably the most you can actually play. But it's a more unknown horror game so I wanted to stick it in there because who knows the next time I'll be able to talk about it. Rule of Rose was a PS2 game developed by Punchline Studios, a very small Japanese game studio whose only other video game developed was a very cute game named Chulip about being a mailman. Man. Nobody's ever heard of it. It's adorable. The Game Grumps played it if you want to check it out. Well, aside from that, their other game was Rule of Rose, a game about being tortured and trapped in an esoteric fairy tale world run by young girls who have developed classism. So they have consistent themes. It takes some big cues from Lord of the Flies, telling a society of English youth in ruins. The plot is, uh, oh, it's hard to summarize, and, and there's no way I'd be able to do it justice in two minutes. So let's just say it's very esoteric. It's open to interpretation. It takes a lot of cue from fairy tales and it's, it's scary in a way a lot of scary games aren't. The team's goal was to create a new type of horror game, citing the Brothers Grimm in their fairy tales and Silent Hill as their main inspiration for horror. Now Rule of Rose is an interesting case for why it's forbidden, because a lot of the controversy surrounding this game wasn't actually in the game, but rather stemmed from rumor and panic over this alleged content. You know, early reporters had wrote that the game featured inappropriate eroticism, obscene brutality, despite the fact that none of these things actually happen in the game. The game was a victim of its own perceived reputation, and it was banned across Europe from being sold. It was cancelled outright in the United Kingdom, France, Australia, New Zealand, and a few other little countries here and there. Justice Minister of the European Union, Franco Frattini, he spoke out about this incident, saying he was disappointed he wasn't consulted before it was outright banned. And he used the game as an example as to why government officials need to meet and discuss with gaming industry representatives.
representatives to ensure they're not censoring content and maintaining freedom of expression, citing that he felt most officials who spoke so fiercely about Rule of Rose had not actually seen any of the game's alleged content, but was basing it off of promotional media or rumor. That's oddly fitting, I think, that the people making rules about it didn't even bother reading anything about it, just banning it outright. No, they're just like gamers getting mad at stuff they haven't played. Now, you're not outright forbidden from playing Rule of Rose, but good luck getting a copy. It's not available on any digital marketplaces, and physical copies for the original release tend to start at around $200. So if you're curious about it, you can always open up another tab on YouTube and try and watch a Let's Play. Much, much, much cheaper. Number three, Dead by Daylight and Stranger Things. Now, if you're a horror fan and a horror gaming fan, the odds are pretty good you've got a few hours logged on Dead by Daylight. Or if you're like your charming host here, you've got somewhere around, I think we're hitting the 500 hour mark. That's all I do when I'm not filming. It is a horror fan's best dream. It's a multiplayer game that pits horror's best heroes, like Ash Williams or Jill Valentine, against horror's nastiest monsters like Michael Myers, Jigsaw, Ghostface, and way more in a 4v1 experience that is just like, unlike anything else. It's frequently copied, but nobody does it like they do. One of the coolest things about keeping up with Dead by Daylight is that every few months, developer behavior drops a massive content pack to keep the game fresh, usually featuring some new playable characters on both sides, some new maps, and most of the time they're original characters from the team, but the most exciting ones are the ones where we get to play horror icons, like the Stranger Things cast. One of the biggest chapters in Dead by Daylight was the Stranger Things crossover, featuring the Demogorgon as a playable monster, Steve Harrington and Nancy Wheeler as playable survivors, and a brand new realm in Hawkins Lab and the Upside Down. The characters look amazing, and like most of the licenses in Dead by Daylight, the team did an amazing job translating the character's personality through their gameplay. Like the Demogorgon's unique power as it digs through tunnels in the Upside Down, or for example, Steve Harrington's perk set kind of reinforces him as a babysitter. You know, you get all these perks to help out the team and kind of take hits for other people, and the map was lovingly recreated. Immersive, and it felt ripped right out of the show. Fans of Dead by Daylight and Stranger Things were thrilled up until 2021, when Behavior lost the license for the Stranger Things content, meaning Hawkins, Steve, Nancy, and the Demogorgon all had to be pulled from the game. Now, if you'd already paid for them, you could still keep them as playable characters. But if you hadn't bought them, then you are completely out of luck. They are gone, and there is no way to access them in the game whatsoever. Now, Steve and Nancy, it's sad, but their skills at least got added to the general survivor pool. But the Demogorgon and Hawkins are a really sad loss, as that's unique content to the game that is totally inaccessible. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully someday the trio can return to the game or even a new Stranger Things chapter. I would be stoked if they added like Vecna as a playable character or Hopper as a survivor. It's an idea for you there. Here's hoping the license come back. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't, but I'm gonna keep speculating. You know, stranger things have happened. If, if you if you got what I, I was doing there, it's like a little little pun on the on the show. We're, yeah, we'll move on. We'll move on. Number two, Sad Satan, with a title that immediately sets off something in your head and graphics that look like they're not from this timeline. Sad Satan is an incredibly evocative game wrapped in mystery. We've talked about it before on this channel, but it's a very bizarre piece of internet history that's worth exploring time and again. The story surrounding Sad Satan is probably more interesting than the actual game itself to me. The gameplay is pretty rudimentary, the graphics are primitive, and on a first pass, you'd be forgiven for not having too much to write home about. You walk down a simple linear corridor, and there's these NPCs that look like little crying people. They line the halls, and there's weird jump scares that'll come out to you. You'd think that this was just somebody's student project. Well, except for all the really strange stuff inside the game. Recordings of infamous criminals like Jimmy Seville or Charles Manson, you can be heard speaking. There's images of victims of crime, accidents, blood-curdling screams, audio from a Swedish radio number station, and a lot of references to real-life criminal acts. Now here's where things get odd. The Sad Satan was first discovered by a now-defunct YouTube channel called The Obscure Horror Corner, who posted a Let's Play of the game. And this was pretty much the first time anyone had ever seen it online. Obscure Horror Corner had said that he'd received a tip for the game from an anonymous source, and that it had come from the deep web. The game garnered attention very quickly for its mysterious and creepy content. Shortly afterwards, someone online claimed that the game that had been reported on wasn't the true version of the game, and that the true version of the game existed out there and featured much more illegal, darker content. Versions of this game were passed around chat rooms and forums, claiming to be the real one. Some of these variants would contain things like illegal material or malicious software to brick your computer outright. Shortly after Sad Satan first became known, 
the obscure horror corner disappeared, leading to a lot of mass guessing. Did he feel guilt and responsibility that this unknown game that should have been forgotten was being passed around because of his attention and it was getting people harmed? Was he the original creator of the game and he was looking for a way to virally market his creation? Like most things surrounding Sad Satan, no one knows for sure, and the mystery surrounding it almost is the game. And number one, PT. It had to be, right? Our first entry had to be PT. Maybe the most instantly recognizable forbidden horror game. As unless you already have the playable teaser installed on your PS4, there is no way to play the game. Which is a tragedy of the highest order, since what we little we were given of PT is a near masterpiece. Please forgive me, I am about to wax very poetic and very nerdy for something I am way too passionate about. Everyone and their baby knows PT was a proof of concept demo for a revival of the Silent Hill franchise, being helmed by Metal Gear Solid's visionary and all around weird creator Hideo Kojima, alongside the immensely talented lover of the macabre, Guillermo del Toro, as well starring Norman Reedus as the protagonist. For horror fans, this was like the ultimate gift and then some. Silent Hill had been on ice for years, and everyone was curious about what Kojima was going to be doing now that Metal Gear Solid had been retired. Kojima had openly talked about wanting to do a horror project, and in the middle of 2015, a mysterious game appeared for free on the PlayStation Store dubbed PT from a development studio no one had ever heard of. The game was short and incredibly simple and is relentlessly terrifying. To date, it's probably one of the single scariest digital experiences I've ever played. You're trapped in a hallway of a suburban house, trying desperately to escape, and you're being pursued by the ghost of an extremely upset woman hunting you who may it be your dead wife. It's classic Silent Hill stuff. Each time you get to the end of the hallway, you find yourself back at the start, only each loop changes more and more, getting more horrifying and outwardly disturbing. The atmosphere of this game is like a mile thick. They did so much with so little. Now, that same year, after PT had been announced and won everybody over, and before the release of Metal Gear 5, it came out that Kojima had been let go from Konami, the owners of Silent Hill and Metal Gear. After Kojima's firing, the project was scrapped altogether, and the game was pulled from digital marketplaces and pretty much scrubbed from the internet. So if you didn't get a chance to play PT, the best you can do is look up a YouTube Let's Play of it and hold up a controller and pretend. Now while we'll never get to play this Kojima del Toro Redis collaboration, Death Stranding released in 2019 and it is just chock full of Guillermo del Toro, Norman Reedus, fetuses, bizarre horror, monster energy, peeing, walking, whales, and lots of walking around hills to beautiful Icelandic indie music. And if any of those things sound appealing to you, you should definitely play it because Death Stranding was great and everybody slept on it. And this year Silent Hill is coming back and while Kojima's not directing, the games we're getting do look amazing from the remake of Silent Hill 2 to the all new Silent Hill F, it has never been a better time to be a fan of either of those creators. And that's about all she wrote, my ghouls and goblins. If you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go back to the Dead Space remake. That's a horror game that is not forbidden and is calling to me. Take it easy and creep on creeping on.